Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents, How Can We Tell Whether We Are Talking to a Computer or a Person? Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. How can you tell if you are talking to a computer? New computer programs called language models have gotten very good at mimicking people. It can be really hard to tell if you're talking to a person or a computer. We wanted to know how people try to recognize computer-generated text and if they could do it accurately. We learned that people unconsciously use rules of thumb to figure out whether they are talking to a computer. These are often wrong, which means that people are vulnerable to scams. Introduction. Can a machine think? Philosophers have been trying to answer this question for hundreds of years. It's surprisingly tricky to come up with a good answer. Alan Turing was a computer scientist who thought a lot about artificial intelligence, or AI. He had an idea for a different way to test intelligence. Instead of measuring intelligence directly, what if you measured intelligent behavior? Can a computer answer questions in a human-like way? If a computer can respond to you so well that you can't tell whether it's a computer or a person, we say that it passes the Turing test. Recently, computer programs called language models have gotten much better at mimicking human language. These AI programs analyze millions of sentences from books and websites to learn hidden patterns in language. It's exciting to see AI generating realistic sentences, but there are also problems with AI-generated text. People have used AI-generated text to cheat on tests. Chatbots can give harmful advice, and scammers can use AI to generate fake information so they can trick people. How do people decide whether something was really written by a person or if it was written by an AI? And can they do this accurately? That's what we wanted to find out. The imitation game, aka the Turing test, is a game for three players. Player A is a computer, seen on the far left of the image, and players B and C are people, seen in the middle and the far right of the image. All three players are in separate rooms. Player B's goal is to figure out whether player A or C is a computer. They can ask questions to both A and C, who write down their answers and pass them back. If the computer can make player B believe it's human, then the computer passes the Turing test. Methods. We recruited 4,600 participants for the study and came up with a simple version of the Turing test. We told participants that they were using a website where some people wrote their own bios and some people used AI to write their bios. Each participant rated 16 texts, half of which were AI generated. They then rated each text on a five point scale from definitely AI to definitely human. When they were halfway through the task, we asked participants for more details on one of the decisions they made. Two researchers read these responses to see what they had in common. To create the bios that participants rated, we gathered over 100,000 real examples of bio text from the internet. We used three scenarios, vacation rentals, job applications, and online dating. We chose these because people have to decide whether to trust someone based on how they describe themselves online. We trained AI models on the full data set. Then we chose 3,500 examples at random of the real text and used the AI models to generate the same number of example texts. We asked a different set of people to judge whether the bio texts were nonsensical, had bad grammar, or were repetitive. We also used algorithms to analyze other aspects of the biotext, such as tense or emotionality. Finally, we used statistics and machine learning methods to detect patterns in whether participants thought a bio was written by AI. Results. Participants rated text as likely or definitely human written in 53.8% of cases. The rest was split between not sure, likely AI, and definitely AI. So, people are slightly biased toward thinking that text is written by people. 
Participants were largely unable to identify the AI-generated bios. Their answers were wrong about 49% of the time, which is not much better than chance. Even though people were wrong a lot of the time, their choices weren't random. If a participant rated a text one way, others often rated it the same way. We found that people were following a few rules of thumb. When people saw nonsensical or repetitive text, they were more likely to say it came from an AI. And it's true, AI text was more likely to have these traits. But some rules of thumb gave wrong answers. You can see this in figure one. People thought bad grammar and unusual word choices came from AI, but they were actually more likely to come from human-generated text. And when people saw contractions like don't or won't, they thought it was a sign of a human writer. But actually, AI was more likely to use such words. Figure 1 shows the odds that a piece of text with a specific trait is human or AI. Each of the traits is a rule of thumb that people use to try and figure out if an AI wrote the text. If the odds ratio is 1, then text with that trait is equally likely to be human or AI. If it is larger than 1, it is more likely to be AI. The purple squares show the actual odds from the data while the orange squares show the average answer from participants. In the graph, the odds ratio is on the x-axis with more likely human to the left of one and more likely AI to the right of one. On the y-axis are the traits measured. From top to bottom, they are nonsense, repetition, bad grammar, rare word pairs, long words, contractions, conversational words, focus on past, first person, and family words. If the true odds ratio and the odds ratio from humans are on the same side of the center line, we say the answers are aligned. Which traits were not aligned? The rules of thumb people followed not only made them often give the wrong answer, but it made their answers predictable. We showed that AI can use people's rules of thumb to produce bios that people think are more human than real human bios. Discussion. People use rules of thumb for all sorts of things. It can be helpful to have a simple, fast way of answering a question, even if it's not a perfect answer. But it can be dangerous to have a rule of thumb that gives the wrong answer. Our results show that there are patterns in text that make people think the writer is human. AI developers could change their programs to focus on these patterns. This could make the text feel more human. Why might this be dangerous? A common kind of scam is called phishing. A criminal sends emails to people pretending to be someone trustworthy. The email might say, Hi, I work for your bank. You need to log in and fix something in your account. With AI, the criminal could make lots of versions of the email to try to make one that's very believable. We weren't sure whether it was a good idea to share our results. What if someone read our study and used our results to make a more convincing scam? In the end, we decided it was best to share our findings so that computer security researchers could learn from them. Conclusion. It's important to be careful on the internet. There is a lot of useful information online, and a lot of fun things, too. But there are also a lot of ways to get in trouble. Things like your birthday, address, or family phone number should not be shared online where other people can find them. The questions you ask a chatbot are not private, and often things aren't what they say they are. We can never know who is on the other side when talking to someone on the internet. It may not even be a human. That's why it's important to not just rely on your gut feeling, but check the website URL and author information. If something seems strange, tell a responsible adult about it. Thank you for listening to this recording. This work has been adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal PNAS, published on March 7, 2023. Research conducted by Maurice Yakesh, Jeffrey T. Hancock, and more Naman from the Department of Information Science at Cornell University 
and the Department of Communication at Stanford University. See the full list of affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources. Thank you.